Amen, amen. It's good to see all of you here. And uh, when you see me here, you know who's about to come up next and pour out what the Lord has filled her with. But before I invite Mama, sometime, uh, I think must have been sometime this week or last week, I can't remember. I came across this scripture and uh, I'll just read it very quickly. It's, it was my first time to come across it, so don't judge me in case it's your usual scripture. Uh, 2 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And uh, this morning, when I was asking the Holy Spirit, now what am I going to say during this introduction? Because apparently there's a time I set a standard. So, um, and the Holy Spirit to told me this thing. He told me, yes, it is good to be, village, to be vigilant of false teachers. But what is actually more important is to be vigilant of the teachers of truth, of those that shall guide our steps. We can't live our lives being scared of false doctrines and not seek truth, not speak the word that is life to us. So ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, let's welcome a teacher of truth, a teacher of life, none other than Mama Salma Lutuka for Wisdom Nuggets. Welcome, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Church. Amen. Good morning. How are you today? Let us have our seats and enjoy this short session that we shall have. Welcome to, I don't think, I think that should be Miss Rachel saying, West, welcome to Wisdom Nuggets. Yes. And I will leave for you to take over. Okay. Welcome to Wisdom Nuggets. Are you excited? It's always a wonderful time to hear mama get into the practical part of the word, sharing your own experiences and literally bringing the word of God to life and to make it in a relatable way. So mama today, uh, there's this thing that I've been, I've been thinking and pondering on. We've had so many teachings, so many what, preachings, about what we confess with our mouths. And um, it's a good teaching, of course it is, because it's biblical. But can we talk about the mind, the power of the mind, and what actually goes on? Because if we just keep talking, talking, confessing well, but the mind has not been transformed, then it is uh, in vain. And there's this thing that I learned about called a placebo effect. A placebo effect is a temporary effect. It comes from a placebo drug. A placebo drug gives temporary satisfaction, temporary or we call fake treatment. So if the mind of a Christian, if the mind of a believer is not transformed, has not healed, is not aligned with the word of God, then Christianity becomes temporary excitement. Christianity ends up being rooted as a placebo effect where we receive and we declare, I receive, I am delivered. I mean, all these powerful declarations we have here. So take us through a brief teaching of the power of the mind. That is so amazing, very profound. Um, it is in line of what I have planned to start teaching us. I want us to read the word of God. Read for me Ephesians 423 and I want you to read it for me in New King James and then read it for me in NIV Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 it says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind let's that's what New King James yeah, New King James. Read it to me in NIV. Be renewed. Remember this word. Be renewed in the, 
in the spirit of your mind. NIV to be made new in the attitude of your mind. Wow. So according to the word that we have heard, do you agree with me when I say that the mind has a spirit? Yes. And the mind has an attitude. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So the mind, our spirit man, is fed through what we do, what we do in our everyday life, what we do that concerns our spirituality. That is how we feed our spirit man. How about our attitude? We work on our attitude as Christians on watching that which we speak, that which we think, that how we treat each other attributes to the attitude of who you are. And this is what the word of God says, the spirit of your mind. So a mind is a whole entity in itself. It's a whole, let alone, let me not just say an organ, it's a, it's a whole company in itself. Just the same way the heart is a whole organ in itself, the mind is the same way. Now, the first thing, I remember the other day, I think it was in the workers' meeting, Papa taught us that he said that the Lord does not tempt us. That is what the Bible says. Do you agree with me? But the Lord tests us. The Lord tests us. Let us read his word in Jeremiah 20:12. Now let us start with Jeremiah 11, 20. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 20. And the Bible says, Verse 20. Yes, Jeremiah 11, 20. Let's start with New King James. Okay. But, O Lord of hosts, you who judge righteously, testing the mind and the heart, let Stop me there. see. Stop there. Mm. Testing what? The mind and the heart. Testing what? The mind and the heart. So the Lord says that, the Bible says that the Lord tests the mind and the heart. Read for us again Jeremiah 20, 12. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 12. I'm teaching you about the power of our minds and how important your mind is, the renewing of your mind is before the eyes of the Lord. As a Christian, as your walk, as your Christian walk before the eyes of the Lord. Let us read Jeremiah 20, 12. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart and mind. Say that again, the last part. And probe the heart and mind. Jehovah. Our Lord, the Bible says, he that probes the heart and mind. What does probe mean? What does probe mean? I believe it means a thorough investigation. Yes. It means examine. Mm. So the Bible says that the Lord, our God, examines our minds. He probes our minds. He takes time. As much as the Bible says that you should check your heart, what is the condition of your heart? It is the same thing. What is the condition of your mind? What are you allowing to go through your mind every single day? What thoughts are you entertaining in your mind? I have dealt with a lot of cases of counseling where marriages are breaking because of the condition of the mind of a woman. What are you allowing to go through your mind? I have dealt with situations where sexual immoral thoughts have stuck in the minds of people that your mind is contaminated, your mind is spoiled because of what, and all this comes from what you see. The Bible says we receive light 
through our eyes. It is through the eyes that we receive the light. And the Bible says, if there is darkness in your eyes, then your whole body is full of darkness. So it starts with your eyes, your naked eyes. What are you allowing to see? What are you accepting? The other day, I was teaching my children. My eldest son came and told me, Mom, I was playing football, and his friend came to him and said, Jediah, I think he was having waffles without chocolate syrup. So the boy came and told him that you're weird because you're not having chocolate syrup on your, on your... And he was very puzzled because these are not words that we use in the house. I watch all the people around my children know that they should examine their words before they utter any words to my children. So he was, Mama, why did he tell me that I'm weird? He was very, very puzzled and concerned. And he looked very, and I told him that sometimes people can come and tell you bad words, but you should always answer back and counter those words. Tell him, no, I am not weird. I am not weird. So it matters the words that we speak, the words that we have accepted other people to speak over us. You know, it brings a thought as it enters into your ear. It brings a thought into your mind, and that thought sticks there. Because if he didn't tell me, he would have always sat. I don't know, the, the enemy would have used that word to convince him that he's weird. And maybe one day you hear a child saying, oh, I'm weird. And you wonder, where did, where did he get such a thing? But it is something that was said to him. And this is the same thing with your eyes. That which you accept to see. That which you sit and entertain with your eyes. It goes and sits into your mind. And as it sits into your mind, it becomes a home into the spirit of your mind. So unless, and that is why, I came to understand, that is why the Bible says, renew your mind daily. It's a daily thing. As the same way you are showering every single day, it's the same thing that you have to renew your mind daily. If there is something, like let me give an example. When I go somewhere, there are many things that happen outside. I cannot be able to control everything that my eyes will see when I'm outside. But I have learned from the prophet of God that sometimes when we come back home, I would hear him pray and say that I sanctify my, my eyes, I sanctify my mind of everything that I have seen and heard. That is a prayer that he prays when we get back. And that is how you renew your mind. That is how you renew your mind. The declarations that you speak with your mouth. And then another power that is needed to the mind is self-discipline. Self-discipline. The moment you sit down, you have some free time, and your idol, the Bible says, an idol mind is the devil's workshop. So the moment your mind is idle, all these things, the devil has a workshop now. They come running in. There is a sexual immoral picture that I saw somewhere. You start entertaining it because your mind is idle, right? Or there's something, someone did something bad to you. You start remembering Oh, this person said these words to me. I wish I would have answered this way. Now I think I just hate that person. I don't like that person anymore. You entertain it. The devil cooks it into the spirit of your mind. And you know what it bats? It bats hate. It bats bitterness. So it all starts with your mind. But if you have self-discipline, that when it starts, 
you put your hands on your heads and you command and declare by the word of the Lord, I command and decree my mind under the authority and under the obedience of Christ Jesus because that is what his word says. You command your mind and you stand up and get something to do. That is self-discipline. Wow, that's a good place to clap. You have countered the acceptance of sitting and allowing thoughts into your mind that give birth to evil things into your life. Wow, that is amazing, Mom. That's amazing. And you know, what's even more interesting is that among the key places where the word of God talks about transformation, where it comes from, is by the renewal of the mind. That is right. Not actions, yes. not doing good, yes. but they're accepting for yes. your mind to be renewed. That is right. And that's also how to counter conforming to the patterns of the world. That is very true. Amen. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, let me just add something. That our minds are renewed by the reading of the word of God. Our minds are renewed by the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. His word says that the Spirit of God dwells in us, that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means he is in us, he lives in us, our minds are controlled by his sanctifying power. So every single day, before you start your day, and every single day in the evening, before you lay your head to rest, make sure you are taking time on the word of God. Make sure you are taking time to have fellowship with the spirit of the living God. This is how we renew our minds. Yes, it is through declaration, but what are we declaring? We are declaring the word of God. We are declaring the understanding of the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit that is in us. So that which you are reading, make it your own. Whatever it is, pick a verse and speak it out, personalize it, speak the word of God. Even if it says God is power, speak it out. Declare that my God is powerful. God is power. Declare that which you are reading. That is how your mind gets that renewal. That is how your mind becomes renewed. When you understand that the Spirit of God is there to teach you, is there to guide you, is there to lead you, and is there to grant you understanding of that which you are reading in his word. This is how we renew our minds. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. There's this, uh, the, there's this thing that I have purposed to believe and to adopt in my life that if it is in the word, then it is for me. Amen. If it is found in the word of God, then it is for me. Is right. I can personalize it in whatever way. Go diagonally, horizontally, up, down, That's and personalize the word of God until it becomes That's flesh. Very correct. His word says, let us read Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. The Bible says, set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. Set your mind. Read for us Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. What does that mean? The things of the earth are the things that bring to us depression, anxiety, Worrying about your tomorrow. Yet his word says, do not worry about tomorrow. When you understand the word of the living God, he takes over fear. The spirit of God takes over anxiety. 
That is why you should always make sure that your mind, focus your mind on things above. And that is why we call for each and every one of us as Christians to be servants in the house of the Lord, that your mind will never be idle, that you have what needs to be done in the house of the Lord, you're thinking about his church, you're thinking about the services of God, you're thinking about how to perfect your service into the house of the Lord. That is how you think about the things above and not the things on the earth. And the rest shall come. The rest shall follow you. I have tasted personally. I have tasted the goodness of the Lord. I have seen the truth of his word that when you serve him faithfully, that when you focus your eyes on him, you will never lack. Amen. Amen. A day Amen. will never come where you will lack. And I teach people that I believe as a Christian, and I'm speaking to you about experience, you can never prosper without having a very a disciplined prayer life. You can't. Yes, the prosperity will come, the money will come, but trust you me, it will fly out of your hands. Prosperity is kept by the power of prayer, by the discipline of a prayerful life. Every single day, when I take my time, when I have that discipline, it doesn't matter how busy I am, what I need to do, it's my time to pray, I am going to pray, because I know that through this, I will always have prosperity in my hands. I will not lack. My hands will lack nothing good. So this is a key that I also teach all of us. And I want us to read one more scripture. And then I'll give you three points which I want us to note down, to work on. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 1, 3, 13. I will read. Therefore, guard up the loins of your mind. Right there. The Bible says, guard up. The loins, the loins of your mind. Of your mind. Guard up. I believe guard up means it, it's almost like a war. Mm. You're getting yourself ready. Alert. You're preparing mm. your mind. You're alert. Guard up the loins of your mind. How do we do that? Let me give you three points. Number one. Deal with the loose ends that exist in our minds and emotions. Your emotions are connected to your mind. Any emotions that you get, anger, happiness, they are manufactured from your mind. It comes from your mind. So I want you to deal with the loose ends. Are there any loose ends in your mind? Is there something that you know triggers you to anger? Deal with it through the word of God, through allowing the spirit of God, as I said, the sanctifying power of the spirit of God to cleanse you in that. And through that, your emotions, you will always, you will never be moved by what someone says or what they do to you, no. I have noticed that the more you soak yourself in the Lord, the more you come out of being a worldly person, the more you become spiritual, the more you anger many people. I have noticed that for no apparent reason, I could go to a store the other day I went with Papa, where was it? 
Let me not spoil for them and say where it is. Somewhere. And he needed help. I mean, it was just very genuine, simple help. And the lady we found there, and she happens to be a manager, was absolutely rude for no reason whatsoever. I mean, unprovoked. Didn't want to help him. And you know, for him, he doesn't know how to fight back. He just, he's, he's very calm. So he'll be very calm and people can easily bully him. And that now brings my true self. I am ready to fight. <laughs> that's when you step in. <laughs> yes, that's when I step in. And sometimes when, when maybe I'm away, he'll give me that eye of, I'm not okay, could you help me? And I always know that eye, and I always come very quickly. True helper. Yes. So I came, and I asked him, are you okay? Did you get the help? And he just looked straight at the lady, and the lady looked very angry, like she just didn't want help, like she was just being very rude. So he explained to me and said, she says that she can't help me because of this. So I looked at her and I was ready to fight, but I, the spirit of God calmed me down and instead started teaching me in that situation that it is the demons in her that, are, that have been shaken up. They're the, yes, they are rioting. They're like, we want to anger this person, this servant of God. We don't want him to have peace. So talk bad at him. Do not help him. So straight away, the spirit of God ministered to me. Do not fight back. Do not come up with that thing I know you're good at. <laughs> Do not. But just calm down and just get him out of the situation. So I spoke to the lady and I told her, every single time you guys tell him this thing, he seems to not be able to get the help that he needs from you guys, and my choice will be to pull him out of this company. And I told him, that's okay, if you can't give us the help, I just told him it's fine, I'll sort it out when you're not here. I took his belongings away from the lady, gave them back to him, and I told him, let's leave very very calmly and when we were outside and he was looking at me like i was waiting for you and i just told him like it's okay the lady just has something in her that could not be able to stand your presence before her and he understood me and we went so the more you soak yourself into being spiritual the more you will anger many people but you have to you have to have control of your emotions. That is where having the spirit of God, the discernment of the spirit. Because if I started arguing with her, it would have brought a very big issue. And she's a manager. She's very able to not accept to help me. But I could just get up and go to another branch or deal with my relationship manager, right? So have the discernment spirit to walk away from situations, to control, to deal with those loose ends that you're not allowing your emotions to be moved, right? That is number one. Let's wow, go to number is, two. Oh, that's a good place to clap. That is a very important life lesson, emotional stability. Yes, that is very that's right. That's amazing. And it comes from the mind from dealing with the loose ends that exist in our minds. Number two, correct those parts of our thinking that we know are wrong. Correct those parts of our thinking that we know are wrong. You know yourself personally. We have secrets in our minds that only God knows them. Am I right? Do you agree with me? So it is up to you with your personal relationship with the Spirit of God to correct those parts. That when you sit down and there is something in your mind trying to come up that you know should not, correct it. Correct it. By the reading of the Word of God, 
by the renewing of your mind through the Spirit of God, by declaring, O oh, precious Holy Spirit, you that lives and dwells in me, remove this evil thought from my mind. Lord Jesus, take charge over the thoughts that cross in my mind. Take control over that which I entertain to come into my mind. So that is number two, correct. Take time and correct those parts of our thinking that you personally know are wrong. We are being taught the word of God every single day. And through the teaching, there are many things that you know you have allowed them to be uh, uh, yes, you have allowed them to be just, I, I don't want to change my thinking. It doesn't matter what the man of God says, that this needs to be done, that I need to be available for service. No, I will come whenever I feel like it. Correct those parts. And that requires a lot of self-awareness. That is very true. Because you'll need to call yourself out. Yes. And agree that, oh, I've been thinking this way. That is very true. But right. the Bible says you bring every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. That is very true. Wow. And self-discipline, as I said. Discipline your mind. Tell your mind, no, we are not going to think about this. We are not going to do that. We are going to follow the ways of God. And you say it loudly. Yes. And you speak it out loud. Yes. I love that. So let us move to point number three. And this is the last point. Remove every wrong thinking by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have touched on this already. Remove every wrong thinking. And this is done by the authority. There is an authority that the word of God has. And when we stand with that authority, when we stand to proclaim, to utter, to confess by the authority of the word of God, my mind is renewed. It shall be so. You will never struggle. It shall be so. When we take advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit, the sanctifying power, I keep saying the sanctifying power because it is the Spirit of God that sanctifies our minds, that sanctifies our entire being. When we take charge of the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, then your mind is renewed. It's as easy as that. And when your mind is renewed, you are available for prayer. You are available to read. Yesterday evening, I was speaking to, to Miss Retro as we were discussing about the session, and I told her, pray that the children of God will receive what we are teaching them with understanding. Because we can sit here and teach all day, but unless you have accepted and allowed the Spirit of God to move through you, and give you understanding, then only one or two people will receive that which we are teaching. And it is through the understanding of the word of the Lord that our lives are reformed. Our lives are made new. The Bible says that we are made new. We are a new creation when we are in Christ Jesus. When we receive our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are made new. We are a new creation. How are we made new? By the receiving, the understanding, the eating of the word of the Lord. So anytime you're making your way to church, always have that prayer. I thank you, Lord, for granting me understanding of the spirit. That I shall, as I enter the church of God, any word that shall be taught, I receive it with understanding. I receive it with the knowledge of the Spirit of God. I receive it with the truth because his word is truth. He says that his word is truth. So you're receiving truth. You're understanding truth. You're keeping truth in the depth of your soul and in the depth of your spirit. Praise the name That's of the Lord. That's beautiful. 
Church, are you receiving something? You guys are too quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I think we can leave it here for today so that we don't give them information overload. <laughs> And they have another service. Are you excited for this segment? Has the Spirit of God ministered to you today? Amen. Because it's very important for a believer to have a renewed mind. Very true. Otherwise, whatever we say becomes lip service and yes. kelele too. Very true. But the mind yes. is everything. Yes. Before anything, the mind has to be that transformed to even true. believe God. That is true. Amen. And even to love God, yeah. to have God, your mind has to be renewed. Thank you for that amazing question that was indeed led of the Spirit of God. And now let us get on our feet. Let Let's clap stand. for Mama as we stand up. This was beautiful. It's always an amazing time Thank you. to Thank have you speak to us. Thank you very much for Amen. your time.